Love blossoms throughout Jane Austen's seaside resort in the first five episodes of the beloved masterpiece on PBS series' final season, which completely embraces the joys and sorrows of romance. You won't just be squealing like a tween at a boy band performance because of the main character Charlotte Haywood and her season two love interest Alexander Colborne. In the final season of the show, almost every Sanditon character, both new and returning, experiences some form of romance. For devoted fans, Sanditon Season 3 is the show at its most intelligent and soapy, and the delay was well worth it. In Episode 3, Raleigh Price is making his own moves to court Lady Denham. She declines to travel in his chariot, but is delighted to go with Price to Alexander Colborne's shooting party. Price laments the time he spent apart from her. Georgiana gets a call from an old flame while she is in London for her trial to protect her fortune from Charles Lockhart. Otis Molyneux, whose gambling debts resulted in the kidnapping of Georgiana, heard about the trial and wished to lend a hand, though it is unlikely that he will be much use, because he wrote to Georgiana's former guardian Sidney while he was in Antigua, hoping to pay Sidney back for clearing Otis's obligations, he is aware of Georgiana's past. Georgiana acknowledges that she thinks of Otis daily and that he misses her. He assures her that even if she loses the case and her wealth, at least she won't have to deal with suitors looking for financial gain and will be free to wed whomever she chooses. Georgiana once imagined that person to be Lockhart. She now hates the guy who is attempting to steal their fortune by slandering the reputation of her and her family. Georgiana and her attorney, Samuel, are presented with a sizable offer by Lockhart's attorney to resolve the case before trial, but they decline. Lockhart testified during the trial that Georgiana's father ever mentioned a kid, but Samuel demonstrates that Lockhart had only ever met him once. Georgiana's mother, one of Lockhart's servants, is said to have seduced Georgiana's father, according to Lockhart's attorney, making Georgiana an illegitimate child. She has also attempted to seduce Lockhart. Just look at his lewd drawings of her, he says, continuing her mother's tradition. Last but not least, her father's doctor attests that when he wrote his will at the end of his life, his mental state had worsened. It should be declared invalid, the will leaving Georgiana with his fortune. Additionally, when Lockhart first encountered Sidney in Antigua, he thought the man was dishonest. According to Lockhart, Sidney and Georgiana planned to use that will to steal her father's fortune. Samuel tells Charlotte, after the trial is over for the day that for the previous ten years, he has only accepted simple cases. He took this case because his brother Alexander pushed him to and offered to pay his legal fees if he lost. The brothers hadn't spoken in ten years as Alexander took on their father's inheritance and debts after his death and Samuel left to pursue his own interests. Samuel thinks that Alexander's marriage may have suffered because of that weight. In court, Samuel still has one more move to make. The doctor called to testify has significant debts and provided false testimony to pay them off, he learned while spending the night in gambling dens. He comes late the following day. He wasn't Georgiana's dad's physician. Samuel also has notes from her father's final days that show he was mentally sound. A certificate of sale demonstrating that Georgiana's father sold her mother when Georgiana was just six months old is another trick Lockhart has up his sleeve. Georgiana might still be a slave since her mother most likely is. Georgiana appeals to the judge, saying that perhaps her father's willing her his wealth was an effort to atone for selling her mother. If it meant she could be reunited with her mother, she would part with everything. The court decides that she is not required to. He declares that the will is unquestionably valid and that no one may be a slave in England. The wealth belongs to Georgiana. Otis provides her with his address and instructs her to get in touch with him if she requires him before she leaves for Sanditon. While the media and London opposed Georgiana during the hearing, the majority of Sanditon sympathized with her and is pleased with her outcome, since he persuaded Georgiana to believe Lockhart was trustworthy. Arthur assumed that he was to blame for her problems. However, Lord Montrose informs Arthur that he was also a victim of Lockhart. Less kindly, Montrose's cunning mother had pinned all her hopes for restoring the family's fortunes on Lydia meeting Alexander out of concern that Georgiana would lose her money. She is now advising her son to continue courting Georgiana, but she is concerned that Charlotte might hurt Lydia's prospects of getting together with Alexander. She is reassured by Lady Denham that Charlotte was merely Alexander's maid and has another man lined up for marriage. Lydia asks Charlotte for assistance in a more gracious manner because Alexander lacks humor. However, Charlotte advises that there is more to him than meets the eye and that he has a soft spot for animals, which Lydia exploits to her advantage. 
The connection between Charlotte and Alexander also intrigues Samuel and Lady Susan. Since neither side is willing to go into great depth, they each have their own theory. Although neither Samuel nor Lady Susan want to get married, they will work together to bring their pals together because they want to support them. Even Georgiana, who also refuses to take advice, maintains that she must maintain her convenient relationship with Lord Montrose in order to shield her reputation and herself from potential suitors. Georgiana dismisses Charlotte's gentle suggestion that she might resume her relationship with Otis. A room she walks into falls quiet, which confirms that she is now the subject of rumors. Even though Georgiana won her case, Mrs. Wheatley, a fellow black woman living in a white society, is the only one to express regret to Georgiana. Wheatley understands what Georgiana has lost because her ancestors were slaves before immigrating to England. Lord Montrose soon abandons any thoughts of a romantic relationship with himself after Arthur is startled into silence when he asks in an indirect manner if he is gay like him. Arthur is told by Montrose to forget the discussion as he quickly flees. Augusta is swooning more and more. She has started to aimlessly wander around and slips out to ride with Edward. She advises him that he needs to persuade her guardian Alexander that he has changed and is deserving of pursuing her. Given her brother's disapproval of Dr. Fuchs, Beatrice Hankins thinks Edward has transformed and understands his predicament of being in a relationship that is constrained by circumstances. At the shooting party, Edward captures the most birds, but when he begs Alexander's blessing to court Augusta, Alexander replies that he will never trust him. Charlotte is questioned by Augusta about how she knew she was in love with Ralph. She sobs with Leo after learning that her relative rejected Edward. Mary has another loved one who has let her down. Tom has made attempts to challenge Price and Lady Denham regarding Price's proposal to raise fishermen's houses in order to construct an opulent hotel, but his arguments have been dismissed. The family of Mary's former maid, to whom she and Charlotte have delivered food and books, is one that will be immediately impacted. Given how much money the hotel would make, Mary only found out Tom had submitted to Price through that lady. Mary concurs with Alexander when he mentions the turmoil such a scheme would bring about for Price. Later, she and Tom argue over it. On Samuel's invitation, Charlotte joined Alexander's party to express her gratitude for persuading his estranged brother to support Georgiana. Samuel has helped her to realize how much Alexander invested in it for Charlotte. After the celebration, Samuel confesses to his sibling that he is in love with Charlotte and that he thinks she feels the same way. She is not yet wed. On the cliffs, Alexander approaches Charlotte and declares his love for her, saying he couldn't let her go back to her fiancé's house without informing her. They kiss, but she quickly draws away while sobbing. She informs him, you shouldn't have said that. She has promised Ralph and her folks that she will get married.